In this video, we're going to talk about the notation surrounding higher order derivatives and how to compute higher order derivatives. So the setup is as follows. So setup. We have a function of x, which we can call y. So y is equal to f of x. So the first derivative, so first derivative, of this function can be thought of as the slope of the function or the rate of change. So the notation we can use for the first derivative is y prime. We can use y prime of x whenever we want to specify the independent variable. x is the independent variable and y is the dependent one because it depends on x. We can also write f prime, f prime of x if we like. And we can do something like this as well. We can write dy dx. This is the derivative of y with respect to x. This is called Leibniz notation, Leibniz. I think I said that right, Leibniz. <laughs> and then we have the second derivative. So second derivative. And again, there's various ways to write this. Uh, so whenever it's the second derivative, you do y double prime, or likewise y double prime of x or f double prime, or f double prime of x. And then when you use Leibniz notation, it gets a little bit funky. It's going to be d2y over dx squared. Let me try to explain the motivation behind this notation. So, um, so here's my theory. So we have dy dx, so that's the first derivative, and we want to take the derivative of this. So we compute d dx of dy dx. And so I believe it was Leibniz who created this notation, thought, well, d times d is d squared. And then dx times dx, I guess, is going to be dx quantity squared. But he decided maybe to just square the x, perhaps. right? So it's somewhat intuitive, the notation, right? x times x and d times d. So third derivative is very similar, so third derivative. By the way, the second derivative uh, represents the concavity of the function, right? So, um, so if the second derivative is positive, the function's graph is concave up. If it's negative, it's concave down. All right. The third derivative, so we have y triple prime, so or y triple prime of x. And if you're watching this video uh, in order, uh, you may not have gotten to this topic of concavity. We'll cover it uh, in a later video f triple prime, f triple prime of x. And then using Leibniz, we do the same thing, d3, dx cubed. Now, when we get to the fourth or higher derivative, um, things get funky. Uh, we stop writing the little prime symbols. For some reason, when we get to this derivative, we do this. We, put, we just put a number there. <laughs> I guess prime, 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 prime uh, was just a bit much. Um, so we just use numbers at this point etc. The other ones are similar and then same thing here. You can put a parentheses or you cannot. I've actually seen it done uh, both ways. Um, so you can write the parentheses or, or not write the parentheses. So the nth derivative would be the same except it would have an n there. So for example the nth derivative nth derivative this would be the same so you, you would just have an n here. So. Uh, or you would have an n, uh, an n here, and an n here in Leibniz. Or, or simply, if you prefer, just this. You don't have to have uh, the parentheses. This is OK uh, as well. So let's do a simple example of computing a higher order derivative. Just really, really easy. So say we have y equals uh, x cubed. Right? So to compute the first derivative, you would just use the product uh, power rule. Right? You bring down the 3. So you get 3x squared. Then you do it again, so y double prime. And so you bring down the 2, so 6x. Then you could do it again, y triple prime. That would just be 6. Then you could do it again, the fourth derivative, this would be 0. So then the fifth derivative would also be uh, 0. So in general, in this case, uh, going on further, you know, the nth derivative when n is bigger than 4, so the nth derivative, would be 0 uh, for n 
greater than or equal to um, 4. One of the reasons we use parentheses is um, if you think about y to the n, you might think it's a power of n. So the parentheses kind of emphasizes that it's a derivative and not a power. So I did that kind of quickly. So just to compute the first derivative, you bring down the 3, subtract 1. To do it again, you multiply, subtract 1. Do it again, the derivative of 6x is 6. Do it again, you get 0, etc. I wasn't going to do an example in this video, but there you have it. So um, to compute higher order derivatives, you just keep taking the derivative over and over again. That's it.